What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with old Drake of Evile. Thank you so much for being here today, man. It's great for you to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so awesome to have you here. Thank you for giving us some new music to wait out these rather wretched times. We got Hell Unleashed coming out this very Friday. Um, being that this was the first Evile album in, since 2013, did you just consider this a direct follow-up to Skull? Or did you think that this was almost like a new beginning for the band and like a new start? Uh, well, the intention was to be a follow-up in a way, but because of the circumstances with um, my brother leaving and me being the vocalist now, we kind of had to switch um, focus and it be a new start and, you know, back to square one in a way because A, the band's been inactive, well, technically inactive for eight years and, it, you know, it's a new singer now. So but when a singer leaves, it's like, it's a big deal. And, you know, that that shift is, is a is a, a thing that people have to take in. So it, we're looking at it as like a fresh start album one again in a way if you know what i mean yeah this is almost like what i would consider to be your back in black moment in a way yeah in a way yeah yep. yeah i agree being that you know you were taking the role of vocalist now were you just kind of like looking at you know the previous evil albums such as skull or you know uh fire serpent's teeth or five serpent's teeth and being like okay this is how it, it's done or were you kind of like bringing in some new styles to the mix and kind of uh, bringing in some uh, stepping into more uncharted territory i we wanted to do something different with this one um we we had like a, a slight inclination to go back to the way of thinking in the first album you know it was just like fun thrash riffs um but we wanted to give it more of an aggressive edge so one thing um i've always wanted in evil is uh, nothing against Matt, but I wanted harsher vocals. You know, because I'm a big fan of Old Sepultura, Slayer, and that kind of thing. And this material is a lot more, it's angrier than the older Evil stuff. So when it came to recording in the studio, we tried a few different things, you know, like more melodic vocals, more, I don't know, more acceptable vocals. <laughs> and nothing worked. The only thing that worked is what you hear on the album. And one thing me and Ben talked about was the band's called Evile, you know, Evil and Vile. And we wanted the music to sound like the name sounds. You know, we've had quite up and down ways of doing things. You know, we've done ballads, we've done thrash. And this one, we just wanted to go all out and just punch people in the face and just be Evile. Well, you, you kind of, in a way, just answered the next question, but like, um, was there at all a lot of experimentation on this album or being that, you know, you kind of went into it knowing you wanted to make something more aggressive, you were kind of revol uh, evolving the sound of this based on a preconceived idea? Well, there was a lot of experimenting because I started writing the album like late 2018 and musically it was finished, I'd say mid-2019. And then the complication with Matt happened. It was too busy to, to do anything, but and then it bled over into COVID. And it, it gave us so much time to listen to the songs again. And it, in a way, we did experiment with them because sometimes you write a song and you just accept that it's finished. And then you'll record the album. And then a year later, you'll be listening and think, I really wish we wouldn't hadn't have done that, you know? Mm -hmm. So it gave us the chance to like, release it in our minds that, that it's finished but now let's listen again so we came back and we we worked on things again so it was, some songs were like seven and a half minutes long and we just sat down and thought why is it that long it just needs to be that long so we like took things out reworked things and we did do a lot of experimenting with what sounds better and the way everything went was it was always leaning towards the, the more aggressive sound you know, that, that death metal edge and speed. And we just, every time we did something slow, we were just like, no, 
Yeah. <laughs> well, what's funny is too, I have a feeling, and I could be wrong in this, but like maybe one of the reasons why uh, you have such an aggressive edge is because it almost seems like everything that could go wrong in the process of making an album happen with you guys between a lineup change and, you know, a lot of other things. And, you know, you had this godforsaken pandemic hit us. It almost just seems like it, it, regardless of what you were personally experiencing or anything like that, this record was just bound. It was almost meant to be this aggressive. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, everything's happened to us through our entire career and even the fact that we've been away eight years, it was like we really wanted to just get it done. And I think if if there'd been like two years or a three year gap, maybe the songs would have been a bit slower. But the fact it's been so long and I was so eager to get a new album out, everything just sped up. <laughs> yeah. And and um, is that kind of like what the meaning of the name uh, Hell Unleashed is? It was just kind of like unleashing everything into this album. I know artists kind of like hate the, oh, what does the record name mean question? But it almost seems like <laughs> after talking to you for just less than six minutes now, it seems like the record name has a lot more meaning behind it. Yeah, I, it didn't initially have that meaning. You know, it was kind of a rush to get the lyrics and titles done, but it's 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 become that the hell unleashed thing because a we just wanted to you know we've been away so long that we just wanted to get in people's faces with the music and unleash the sound and the sound is pretty much hellish and it's 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 become that meaning now it wasn't before but i do agree with you it is it's it is hell unleashed now. Yeah. the world was giving you hell and now you're unleashing it back Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you and another question is kind of like regarding, you know, this overall record, but like, you know, could the first two singles you released, Gore and the title track, Hell Unleashed, almost serve as maybe a good representation of what this whole album is gonna sound like? Or even though being that, you know, you mentioned it's a lot of it's there's a lot of heaviness, but there was also some experimentation that, you know, that that's those first two singles are just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I'd say they're the tip of the iceberg because uh, my favorite songs aren't the singles. There's one more single coming out tomorrow. And, um, well, maybe the one coming out tomorrow is my favorite, but still. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many different things on each song. It's not just all the same kind of, you know, E thrash. It's You have to listen to the whole album to appreciate, I think, because we spent so much time on every aspect of the album that just listening to those two songs it doesn't give you the full test of the album at all. Yeah. It, it seems like you kind of have, especially with this album, you had the perfect bridge of like making something that's very consistent without it being repetitive, but you also had the ability to experiment without being directionless. Yeah. We, th that was our goal. We didn't want the album to be too long. We only wanted like eight songs and we wanted a clear direction on each song. We didn't want this to be any lulls. You know, we listen to the songs and think, Right. If, if I get bored for one second, it's getting deleted. You know, it has to all be good all the way through. And it just happened to come out, you know, nine songs long. I think it's like 41 minutes. And it's, it's just right for us. I think it's just the right kind of listen. Yeah. Did stepping up as the vocalist also maybe uh, teach you some new tricks and twists or new techniques on how you play your instrument as well? Like, did that at all maybe influence how you play in a way? Yeah, it did because I'm, I've done backing vocals live before, um, but I've not done the main singing. I've, I've done it a few times where Matt's guitar's broken and he has to leave the stage, but the song's still going, so I'll step up and do the vocals, but nothing like this. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. I, I started doing the, the demo vocals and I just tasted blood and my throat just really hurt and I thought, right, if, if I'm going to do this, I really need to like go to school on my voice. And I spoke to Melissa Cross and I'm getting help with her. And it's so complicated. I thought it would just be like, ah, oh, do some warm ups and then it's fine. But to do metal vocals, especially when we start touring, is really difficult. Yeah. So, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, but know. there's no better person to learn from than Melissa Cross. She is great. Uh, She's awesome. She's great. Yeah, and she's worked with like vocalists that like sound nothing like each other, like Burton from Fear Factory, uh, Corey Taylor, Tommy Vex. I mean, you name it. Like she's worked with everybody. 
Yeah, I mean, she, she said this to me. The, the the most essential thing is everyone has the same science in their body, regardless of what genre of music you're playing. If you're singing clean or you're screaming, it's still the same basic dynamics in, in the human body. So it's, it's really interesting. Oh, really? So it's like when she teaches you that, like once you learn those basic dynamics, you could pretty much sing or scream in any way, shape or form? Yeah, pretty much. There's just some some really strange, weird techniques and exercises that I even within the first week, I, I noticed like a 50 percent increase in my ability to sing just from this one thing she showed me. I was like, what? How? <laughs> really good. And I know I'm probably asking this question way far in advance, being that Hell Unleashed isn't even out yet. But like, do you think that with, you know, taking this new approach to this album and, you know, learning new techniques that this opened up way more doors for Evil and for future uh, songwriting? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're just back in business now. Before we were doing like an album every two years, touring in between it. And yeah, we're just back to that. And we hope, you know, we, we can do it a lot more. The only problem is now is we're, we're all older. You know, we, we have uh, more responsibilities than we did when we were 19. And, you know, the, the, the family and the job is the main focus. The band is always going to be the hobby. And, you know, maybe one day that balance could change where the band could be more the career. But at the moment, you know, it's, it's got to be a hobby, so fingers crossed we can do it for a lot longer yeah and that's very uh humbling and very honest to, for you to admit because like you know I, I, and nothing to be said when people say rock and roll is my life and nothing comes in between that but like family <laughs> health like a lot of things do come first so like i mean yeah i, I think w one thing I, I think musicians need to do more often is be honest in the fact that they do have a full-time job you know they, they, you always see on facebook like their job says guitarist at band. Like, no, it's not. That's not your job. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is cooler to have that. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, it like, is. It is cooler. Like, like this, as a music journalist, this isn't my uh, full-time gig, but I, I put it yeah. up there. I, I'm a little, I feel attacked, man. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I think being honest about who you are, because to me, that's really one of the epitomes of rock and roll and heavy metal is honesty. Whether you're singing about, regardless of what you're singing about, forget subject matter. I mean, it's an honest form of music. So how could you make honest music if you can't be honest about who you are? Yeah, 100%. And I think us, us being from the north of England, that we can't be anything but honest because... It, it would just show through straight away if we went on <laughs> Yeah, I got to say, and that's why I love interviewing uh, bands from Britain is that you guys are all so brutally honest and you always make great interviews. <laughs> yeah. So uh, every every interview I've done with a band from Britain has always been some of the best discussions I've ever had. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yep. Now, being, you know, you know, obviously you had to learn how to, you know, vocal techniques and all that, but then there's also lyrics that you have to write as well. Like, has there ever been a time where like you're writing lyrics and maybe that could help influence the direction of the music or are you always music first before any lyrics come into play? Um, th this time around, it had to be the music first because the intention was for Matt to put lyrics and vocals onto the music. Uh, because that didn't happen, it was 100% all the lyrics have to go onto the music. But there were some instances where what the lyrics were were becoming was changing the riffs because the words just didn't fit over the music. You know, I had to change a few things. Um, but mostly, I, th I think it's the same for a lot of metal bands. The music always comes first, mostly, and then I, I, I don't want to say vocals aren't important, but in metal, I think the lyrics and the vocals are kind of the, the icing on the cake. I think the cake is mainly the riffs and the drums and, you know, the overall feel of the song. I know vocals are important, but 
in some cases, the vocalist could be singing anything and I would just be re- having a really good time with the music. <laughs> well, I do agree and disagree. Like, if the music isn't appealing, I'm not going to give two shits on what the concept is. But there are some bands yeah. that are very concept-driven, like Mastodon. I mean, every album is like its own yeah. story and how they bring historical elements into uh, personal stories. Fear Factory is yeah. a great example of a concept-driven band, how they bring artificial intelligence into their sound. So I think it really depends on the band. What I think is great about Evile is just pedal to the metal, no questions asked, no strings attached. So really, I don't care if yeah. you're singing about you know murder or if you're singing about cotton candy. I think in the end, it's just still going to be Evile. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I, I'm, I might do a cotton candy song, but I, th- I think I might stick to the the war and and, and murder. <laughs> we are rotten candy. You got to make it a little more. Metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good idea actually. <laughs> yeah. And uh, being that, like, um, you know, because singing, you, you mentioned that you've always done backup vocals. So, like, obviously singing and playing, it's not like two, you know, it's not like one minute, like, you know, you're just playing guitar and then you have to be James Hetfield all of a sudden or Matt Hafey. But, like, does do, do you feel that, like, when you are playing, you know, in the future when live music returns, do you feel like you're going to almost have to adjust your stage presence a little bit or maybe, like, uh, change things up on how you perform? Yeah, well, I think it's going to be a learning process. And I think even when we play live, I'm going to have to at some point, you know, remind people that this is literally the first time I'm doing this. So I can't really be running around like I used to because I've got to make sure I'm at the mic, stuff like that. Uh, But I'm better at it than I thought I would be, like playing and singing at the same time. But there's there's some aspects of it that I, I still can't wrap my head around you know because like matt's been doing it since we started in like 1999 and so he's been doing it that long playing and singing at the same time in a in a band situation so i haven't i've just been doing it for the backing parts so you know i'm, I'm learning right now I'm, I'm practicing uh but it's just you know it's not it's not an overnight thing it, it will definitely be on tour learning yeah, well, fair enough. And, and you know, again, going back to the honesty thing, that's really cool that you're honest with your fans about it, and I think that's mm. more respectful. And, you know, it, there's something to be said. I watched uh, James Hetfield's interview on Joe Rogan the other day, and he says there's something about a man fucking up that makes the show somewhat more enjoyable because it makes you know that they're human. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, mentioning it, Hetfield, there's a, a recording of, um, I think it's Ride the Lightning, and there's one verse where he just completely forgets the lyrics and even incorporates saying, I forgot the fucking words. And that just makes it cool to me. You know, someone that people do mess up and they, it, does, it doesn't affect them. You know, they just carry on, get on with it. And I like that. It's really cool. Yeah, definitely. And of course, you know, there is going to be some older material now that some of your diehard fans are going to want to hear. So are you going to try to keep like songs from enter the grave or infected nations like are you going to try to like maybe stay as true to those songs as the original or are you going to put maybe a new spin on it when you play them live yeah i'm we're going to stay completely true to the originals um i'm going to sing them just well as like matt as i can um like we have a few ballads where it's clean vocals i can i can sing clean pretty well so it's going to be the same as, as it was on the albums, but it's just a different person, really. Yeah, and that's cool. Like, you know, the same songs, but only different. Same thing, only different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, again, I, I'm going to call you the Thrasher William Duvall. I think that's what I want to call it. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Now, being that, like, you know, I feel like, you know, not to pigeonhole Evile by any means, but you mentioned, you know, you have ballads, you have, you know, straight up rock and roll, you have thrash metal. I feel like you bring like many different elements to the table in your aggressive form of music. Is it fair to say that all of the members of Evile uh, have all had different influences that maybe played into your songwriting? Yeah, I'd say so. We have influences ranging from like Ben's favorite band is probably Heart. The drummer Ben, um, Rush is Joel's favorite band, the bassist. Um, but I, we all listen to lots of different things. Like one, one thing I like listening to when I'm completely metaled out because it's kind of like a job. If you spend months writing metal, you don't want to listen to metal yeah. all the time. So I really like listening to uh, Miles Davis and jazz just to like completely 
disassociate myself with metal for a while. And some aspects of, I'm not saying I can play jazz, but some aspects of Miles Davis playing, I admire how he can play three notes and it mean more than someone playing 200 notes. And I try and incorporate that way of looking at things like my solos. I try and slow down a bit and make them a bit more memorable and not just play a million miles an hour all the time. So it, which is hard to do in thrash. You kind of have to play fast some, some of the time, but yeah, we've, we've got so many different influences in the band that I think maybe that gives us a, a unique spin on things. I'm, I'm not sure. Definitely. I don't know. Definitely. I mean, I love thrash metal music, but you, you bring up a good point too. When like um, you, you write metal all the time, you don't want to listen to it. It's very, very rare to find an artist that's like appropriate for every every setting you know what i mean yeah like like i love you know slayer but like for a mellow out song you know to me the only vocalist i could really think of off the top of my head where i could listen to it if i'm pissed off or i could listen to it if i mellow out is shirley manson that's really the only vocalist i could think of that really like it's a laid back easy yeah. relaxing voice but she also has a lot of attitude for music when you're pissed off so that's one of the yeah. few artists. Mike Patton I would put up there as well. Oh, yeah. He's like God tier. <laughs> well, I don't think Mike Patton's human. I'm, I have a I have a conspiracy theory. I'm writing an essay that that guy's actually a robot. Like, I think he's been working with Elon Musk this whole time in those computer chips <laughs> to, like, insert different voice boxes. I think I think him and Elon Musk are, have formed an alliance of some sort in metal. It, it would make sense. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the final question uh, I just wanted to ask you is, is there just anything else that you would like to promote for the release of Evile? Like, uh, you know, with obviously, you know, thanks to a certain virus that shall not be named, obviously uh, <laughs> live shows aren't in the question at the moment, but obviously when this bullshit is said and done, we'll be seeing you on the road quite a bit. Can you bring Evile to the U.S. soon when things open up? Oh, again? yeah, definitely. We, we came to the U.S. in 2010. I think we were there for five months. We did five psych... Uh, circuits and i can't remember a lot of it it's just a blur now and that's not even because of alcohol that's just because it was so long i was in high um, school still at that time so i missed oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah other than that I, i'd just like to say if anyone does like the new eval stuff that do consider getting a physical copy of like the cd or the vinyl um it goes so far in helping the band uh uh, any artists who are on a record label, it means so much for people to buy the music and, and hold hold it in their hands. I, I love having a physical product myself, but you know, people buy merch and gig tickets, which is awesome. It goes towards so much, but the music is a different animal. And yeah, I, I won't go into detail, but it helps bands so much when people buy the music. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, buy the music and support the artists and. Uh... The more you do that, the quicker we could, the quicker we could get back to you know seeing music as much as we did. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But thank you so much, Old Drake. Everybody, Old Drake of Evile. Be sure to pick up Hell Unleashed coming out via Napalm Records this Friday, April thirtieth. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.